Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to your Lake Fort Guide. Another episode of the Guides Network. Gonna have something a little unique, a little different lined up. I got my man, the Smash Captain. We're here in the Smash Factory, Mr. Heath Taylor from Smash Tech Custom Baits. We got kind of a neat episode, I think, lined up for you guys today. Today, we're gonna discuss how to make your own baits in a way, kind of a little different take. We've done this once before with pouring plastics. We did some hand pouring. We're gonna do something a little bit different today. Today, we're gonna talk about how to pour blanks and how to custom paint using airbrush techniques, correct? And this will also apply to you if you want to airbrush hard baits or anything like that. Yeah, correct? same thing, just a little different paint. Right. And you can look up you know, the different paints that you use on soft plastics versus hard baits. So, so Mr. Heath Taylor, who makes some of the, make no mistake, some of the finest custom-made baits on planet Earth for bass fishing, is going to break down how to make your custom-painted trophy-catching bass fishing baits today. Gives her chat, little Gary. Oh, hold on, I, time out, I got excited. Y'all stay tuned. guys as usual when we do the smash tech videos mr heath has so generously agreed to give away the baits that he's showing us how to make today don't worry we will eyeball both sides of them before we give them away but all you got to do to enter to win our same usual deal drop it in the comments smash tech custom bait if you comment smash tech custom bait below you'll enter that you'll be entered in a chance to win these custom painted swim baits right behind me that you see right here um we'll give away a winner on youtube we'll give away a winner on facebook and whichever one gets the most comments, we'll give away the seven inch on that platform as well in a random drawing. And I'll just count up all the comments. We'll draw a random number. Whoever gets that will win. I will then comment back to you or DM you. You hop, you send me your address and we'll ship you some baits. My man. Sounds good. All right, we're gonna go through kind of the steps of you know, making the five inch weedless gizzard chad, but it applies to all the, the gizzard chads and, and the bluegill. All of the baits, a lot of the baits that we, we airbrush. We'll start out with a uh, just a pearl white base. Uh, that's what we do on all of them. That way we can paint them whatever color we want to, but I like starting out with just a white base. Uh, and you get your plastic up there around 350. And uh, basically we use a hand injector. Uh, if I'm doing big batches, we'll we'll go over and, and we do do it on a, a different scale with, a, with actually a an injection type machine. It's it's still with the hand hand injection. What, buddy? First, we have we have all the molds. I've had the molds designed and, and made for the different base that I wanted. I, I sketched them out, uh, sent them to a guy. He did some some digital design work and got the molds actually CNC cut for us. Uh, so they're like there are original designs. If you're gonna shoot them, you just you draw in. Just like you were going to shoot a, a worm, you see some videos, and you shoot them in the molds exactly the same way. Fill them full and top them off. You know, like we've kind of always said, we do them one at a time, we don't have a we don't have a big machine with a big assembly line shooting 50 or 60 baits at a time. So that's why it does take us a little longer sometimes. Whenever you're, and this, this goes for if you're shooting a worm, a, a crawl, or anything. Whenever you're shooting a CNC injection mold like this, always keep it topped off. If you don't keep it topped off, that plastic will draw down as it cools and you'll end up getting an air bubble in the nose of the bait. So you're going to allow them to cool for just a few, few minutes, actually just a couple minutes. It doesn't take long at all. Uh, the longer you go shooting them, especially with these aluminum molds, we uh, 
the mold's going to get hotter and hotter, so it's going to take it longer and longer and longer to cool. But these molds were cold, so it's not going to take very long. After you wait a little while, uh, we've got an air vise that holds all our molds together. You know, you've seen if you watch very many videos of of kind of at home deals, a lot of people will use bar clamps, you know, hand clamps that that they have to do themselves. This we had made by a company, and it's actually an air vise, so we can clamp a whole bunch of molds together. And uh, you know, these these are actually the the smash tail and smash tail junior molds right there. So you can smash, uh, you can put a lot of molds together. So whenever you open the mold, you're gonna have your baits just like that. And that right there is for your hook slot. So what you do is you take that out and that's gonna leave your hook slot for your, for your hook to go in. So you go through all the molds and demold them. What I'll what I'll do is these will get hung up and to cool, and they'll need to cure for. I like to cure them at least a day uh, before I go ahead and paint them. So you go through all the molds, pull all your baits, and you just keep repeating this process over and over because there's, you know, Tack Warehouse when they order, and you know they might order between all the different colors that they order, they might order 150 packs. So. You just keep doing it over and over. Each, you know, each one of these molds is is a pack of five inch. So you just keep going over and over. And then when when they have cooled and cured for a day, a lot of times we'll we'll have them hanging up, and uh, you probably get a shot of, of some of them hanging here in a little bit. So we'll let them hang, and then we'll put them on little boards that we'll see in a little bit and that's how we'll paint them. So those will be ready to, to cure and hang and, and be painted in another day or two. Now on all the gizzard shad and and bluegill, you know, all the all the different things that we airbrush, um, you know, kind of a cool side note. Uh, we were just painting out on a table, uh, trying to vent stuff out of the out of the window and actually the week before Stan passed away. He built this paint booth, uh, so it's, it's a whole lot better place to, to paint in. Uh, so, like I said, you got all your paints. Um, you have to use a special um, solvent-based paint when you're painting soft swim baits, or it will not stick to them. Uh, and you can you can do some research on stuff like that. Spike it uh, is the one that kind of makes the stuff. Whenever we're doing the gizzard shad, say we're going to do a chartreuse shad, uh, like I said, we start with the base white. And what I'll normally do is I'll lay down basically a silver coat over. And usually I'm wearing a mask and we've got the ventilation turned on and everything, but to be able to talk and, and hear. We're not going to do that because we're just going to do a couple. We're paying the price for all of you yeah. watching. Yeah, we're just going to we're going to inhale some very strong because th this stuff right here you do not want to do in a poorly ventilated place, or you don't want to do this in your house. Uh, it's bad, bad stuff. Um, basically, this airbrush, I'm just going to lay down. Silver base coat. The, the cool, one of the cool things about this solvent-based paint is it dries really, really, really fast. So when you're painting these soft plastics like this, you don't have to wait very long. Between coats. This is the, the seven inch weedless gizzard shed. So when uh, when I change colors, I just use a use a thinner type stuff. Um, probably several kinds of work, but I just I use called MEK. So if we're going to make this into a chartreuse shed, we're going to get our chartreuse. Pour a little 
chartreuse. So you're just pouring that paint down in that airbrush socket yeah, this, there? Yeah, this airbrush is basically, like I said, it's filthy. But, Where do you get something like that? I mean, it's just an uh, airbrush kit? This, this, is, this is just a, an Iwata airbrush. Um, you can get them for less than $200. Is there a certain amount of paint that you're pouring into that, that top? Not pressure? really, just I'll, I'll pour what I think I'll, I need. Uh, I'll probably pour a little more than I need because you'd rather have a little too much because you can always dump it back in. Uh, I got you. But I just, and you can control, basically you control the air by pushing down and the uh, the amount of paint by pulling back. So if I want to do just a, a fine line, chartreuse line, I can lay that chartreuse line down like that. Let me oh, hold that bucket. I'll go ahead and do it in the now. sun. See, I can do it light and get darker until I get a chartreuse line that I want. And I'll do the same thing with the other ones. You know, people ask, people wonder why I'm, sometimes swim baits are a little expensive because all the different steps that you have to go through. It's a labor intensive process, isn't it, buddy? It is. And, you know, this is actually, we're doing it for the sake of time. These are, this this pattern is a very... Show, hold those out here so that chartreuse stuff, stripe will show up a little better. This is a much simpler pattern than, say, our bluegill and, one of them be good. and say, our, uh, you know, our bluegill or our barfish, uh, yellow, uh, barfish, yellow perch, stuff like that is a much more involved because some of those have you know six to eight colors in them and six to eight different steps that you go through and what i'm doing now is what I'll, I'll use that thinner and i'll just kind of purge it so that's how you do that i'll stick my finger over it and it kind of it kind of bubbles the the solvent inside there gotcha. and it basically cleans that chartreuse out of there because i don't want the chartreuse in there anymore and usually like i said i've got my ventilation going so it's sucking all this stuff out take my top color and you know Stan made all these little blocks that we're uh, using to hold the baits People that do hard baits, they're used to either putting them on a vise or uh, hanging them from a string or something like that. But these little nails and these little boards will hold the hard, uh, soft baits. Doing the, the thin details, you want to just real light, fine detailed work. And you can, once you get up here, you can open it up a little bit more. And it's starting to look more like a more like a shad now. Mm -hmm. What are we doing now? Finishing up the 7 inch good shad. Just adding a little more color to it? Well, adding this back color and there's only a couple more steps that we do on the chartreuse shad color. And now that we've got the line, we've got our top color. Let's see that. Let's bring that shadow here close to the camera for me. We kind of got it blended in. No, that's in the foreground. Yeah, there you go. Boy, that's pretty. And then uh, it still, you know, still doesn't look quite the way we want it yet. 
what we'll do, and since we're, we're just going from a dark gray to a black. I like putting the, uh, the old shad dot, the old kill dot, on them if I'm doing a shad bait. So a little plastic sheet that actually the, the eyes for the baits come on with a hole puncher makes a pretty good shad eye. Uh, shad dot. Shad dot uh, stencil. Nice. Very cool. So you take and put it. Where you want the shad dot to be? Hold on, hold on. Okay, I just yeah. had to let it focus for a second. Go ahead. Yeah, you put it where you want the shad dot to be. And then you got a perfect little shad. Then you got a shad dot. I started out freehanding them, and I didn't, I didn't like. Didn't like the way it was working. Probably couldn't get that sharp, clean edge to it, huh? No, you couldn't get the real good, clean edge. Yeah, I'll bring that towards the camera. And then what I'll do after I get the shad dot on it on these little guys. I like putting a little, I didn't start out doing that, but I think that little bit of dark on the head sets it off. Very nice. And that one just needs eyeballs. Looks good. Drop a comment down below, let us know what you think it looks like. I think it looks like it'll catch a fish. And in fact, in case you missed it, <laughs> that exact bait painted in that exact color caused an immediate reaction a few weeks ago right here on this channel. I just dropped it to test the swim bait. <laughs> Holy cow. I think Smash X swim baits work pretty good. <laughs> I think it works. Good night. Good night. <laughs> uh, Son. Uh, Look how he ate it, too. Look at that. I think it was my frog that drew him up here. Yeah, <laughs> he ate it, didn't Dude, he? Dude, I dropped that swim bait. You just go look at it in the water and then. <laughs> Holy cow, folks at home. That's my little homie right there. We'll show y'all a little Gary here in a second. First, we'll get you a nice look at that beautiful, beautiful Brandy Branch Bass right there. That's a good one. I dropped it in the water to make sure it was swimming true, and I didn't even get the, I gotta check it again. I still don't know if it's swimming true or not, because he ate it before I could even check it. Good grief. You are gonna believe that, but you were just, I thought you were just looking to see how it looked in the water. That's it, I, that's all I was doing. I went I've been to, sitting here fishing since you've been tying on. I mean, he backlashed my reel and everything. I had my button open and everything. That was a wow moment. That's pretty amazing catch. On the bigger ones, I'll get a little more detailed when I do the head, just because there's more room. So I'll actually take and shade that gill plate area a little bit. Just gives a little more depth. That right there is the painting part. I will take and lay some clear over that. I've got some mixed up, I'll go ahead and do it. And that clear does, does a couple things. Puts a little more shine to it and it, it helps Sometimes this stuff will, if it doesn't, if you don't put it on exactly right, in the right thickness, it'll try to uh, peel off easier you know, after a few fish. And once you drop this clear on there, it locks it on there a lot better. And to me, it just it looks better overall. Go over a. Uh materials list on like if somebody wanted to get started airbrushing some hard baits or something like they want to take some old crankbaits they've got and do what you just did to them trick them out make them look good if you wanted you could basically do the same exact process uh, but what you're going to want to get if you're going to get into hard baits is the airbrush is the same uh, but you're going to want to get instead of the spike it which lure works is a is a is a company out of that's uh, owned by Spike It. They make the 
the plastic paint. Now, if you're going to get into painting um, hard baits only, you can use it's a stuff called Createx. It's a and this the good part about this it's not near like it's water based most of it, so it's not going to kill your lungs like this stuff is. Uh, so and you can go to uh, you can go to Hobby Lobby and find this stuff. Uh, so you know it's not it's not uh, hard to find like this stuff you can only order it from like like here's some here's some baits I'm I'm going to uh, Mexico in January so I'm playing around with some different blanks that I that I found on uh, online little floating glide baits that I'm going to paint like a tilapia and I'm experimenting with different patterns and designs of how I want to paint a hard body tilapia but um, so that's what's going on over there. So on the airbrush kit, like if somebody's wanting to get into this, uh, I mean, I, I see you got the airbrush, you got the whole, I guess you need a compressor of some kind? Yes, or? you need a, I use a big compressor that runs my whole bait shop. Uh, it runs my clamps, it runs my injection pots, it, it runs lots of different things. And I just have it piped down the wall and I have different outlets. Now if you're going to just do painting you can actually just get either like a little pancake compressor or they actually sell little hobby airbrush compressor kits at, at Hobby Lobby that comes with a little small you can compressor. Just basically look up an airbrush kit and yeah, any can. airbrush kit will get it done for you. Basically. Uh, like I said that's a more expensive airbrush but you can you can learn with, with cheaper airbrushes. Um, this little thing right here, this is what I like painting hard baits on. They're called uh, I think they're called helping hands or something like that. They're uh, they're at. You can get them at Harbor Freight for, I don't know, five bucks or something like that. But when I'm painting hard baits, like I'm painting the big jointed gizzard shads, or if I'm painting these these SOS fives, you can hold them just like that, and it makes it a whole lot easier to me instead of hanging them by one of these wires over here that I, I do sometimes. This is a whole lot easier to turn paint different sides. Um, if you want to use a template, like this template I cut and made for the yellow perch, uh, there are some commercially available templates that you can buy and I've got a bunch of those that you know they'll have different lines and things cut and you can just look up uh, lure templates. Go to, go to Google search lure templates. Um, and if you're using like a template, you can hold it up to this instead of trying to steady a, a piece of wire. This holds it real steady so you can stick templates over it and spray through that template and make make lots of different cool designs. Like here's one that actually goes around a, a crankbait. It's made to shape the shape of a crankbait. So there's lots of different lots of different templates and designs you can you can do if you want to paint your own baits. Uh, but you can go to Hobby Lobby, you can pick you up an airbrush, you can pick you up whatever color paint you want. Um, get some of these from Harbor Freight. And for clear coat, I've actually gotten to like, um, it's called Diamond Coat. Uh, you can either air, you can thin it down really thin and spray it, or you can brush it on. And then some people will use a like a two-ton epoxy. Um, I tried the epoxy for a while, brushing it on, didn't like it that much, so I went to the uh, Diamond Coat Clear, and I found that it does really, really well. Uh, haven't had much trouble with paint coming off. I'll, you'll have teeth marks in it, but the paint won't chip if once you get that good clear coat on it. So, uh, prepping your baits uh, for hard baits, kind of sand them with really, really fine paper. A sandpaper, clean them with, with a thinner alcohol to get any kind of oils or residue off of them before you paint them. Other than that, these guys just need eyeballs, which uh, I have found. Let me see if I have something to fit it right here. I have found that a. Got a couple little guys right here. One of the best glues I have found is Gorilla Glue Gel. 
will stick these eyes on here really, really well. And all it takes is just a, a drop right in the middle of the eyeball. it in there and that that sets it off and finishes it up hey Heath man thank you so much for uh, showing us how to paint these custom baits I know you made some awesome custom baits for me you made awesome custom baits for a lot of people and uh, now you've shown a lot of people how they can go do it on their own and it's just you basically just took money out of your pocket and threw it at them so we appreciate well, that that's how the craziness starts you wanted to do it the way you I know that's how this whole Shaboom got started with you as you wanted to make baits the way you wanted to yeah. fish them and now it ended up being a whole thing Yeah, and now there's you can't even walk in this crazy <laughs> Messy. I know he won't let me show you the rest of the shop. Yeah, it's a wreck. So. It, it looks like a bomb went off a, a, a very cool swim bait oriented bomb, but a bomb So hey, man, thank you so much you bet. for sharing the knowledge and sharing the tips Hey, thank you to every one of you guys for watching today. We certainly hope you enjoyed it Let us know did that help you was that an interesting topic? Would you like to see something else like this? Down the road in the future, Mr. Heath Taylor showing you how to maybe make some more baits because he's got a lot of different stuff he does in the old Smash Factory. I've been privy to Gander every once in a while. I'll even see some top secret stuff, then I make him sell it. Yeah. <laughs> Makes me more work. I make more work for him. That's right. Hey, like we said, thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you next time right here on Your Lakeport Guy. You're on camera right now. What are you going to say? Um, Don't just stand in the corner I mean, like you're hiding. That video, like, later. Well, you're on the video right now. You're not a bait painter, so you can't be in the painting video. But I am a good painter. You're a what? I am a good painter. Yeah? Yes, my brother is a very good painter. Hmm. What about your dad? Is your dad a good painter? Yeah. Okay. Ha <laughs> ha